Hello, I've been Andrew here with the Hammer Game Channel. Welcome back to the New Order of the Last Days of Europe and to my purified Aryan Brotherhood playthrough. We're in the last episode, I can't really remember what we got up to. Oh, I think we took on the Finns, that's what happened. Anyways, we're now heading down towards um, a clash of gods, which is where the series will split into two. Uh, we do still have a decent number of focuses to get through. Uh, I don't know if there's actually going to be much in terms of events happening, but we'll see what happens. Um, let's go ahead and do the blood. Russia has lacked a strong central authority for over 20 years. Before our conquest, it was a land categorized by madness and anarchy. Criminals preyed upon to be mentioned intermesh alike. Even now, with everything west of the Urals and the Arboot, there is still a persuasive sense of lawlessness outside the heavily garrisoned cities. We will not stand for this any longer. There must be a sense of security for the Aryan race to thrive and for the slaves to work safely. Luckily, the Brotherhood has no shortage of volunteers, with plenty of combat experience and an eagerness to keep the peace. We will form a new domestic security force with these volunteers. While their brothers are preparing for our next conquest, we will entrust these men with enforcing the new laws outlined in the Aryan Code. Now will bring stability to Russia, using whatever methods they consider necessary, knowing that dissent and disruption cannot be tolerated if Aryan bloodline is to survive. The methods they choose to use might be unpleasant. In fact, they definitely will be. <coughs> oh, extremely so. This is how it must be. If our laws are going to be respected, the people must learn to fear those who enforce them. Okay, 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 okay. So, that's all done. We're integrating Onega. I could probably do some more of these. Is there anything that gives us manpower? I could do with some more manpower. Oh, or we could do you. Because we did kind of... Well, we did butcher our army, but we... We did have a costly war against the Finns. We are sorting out our division, so that's fine. Anyways, um, since we're not really going to do having too many events popping up, we might as well just read through these. The farms and pastures of our nation lie in ruins. Many of them have been abandoned. The buildings left to decay and the fields overgrown with weeds. Others are still half destroyed, littered with craters and exploded ordnance from the time of the German bombing runs. Even the fields that do produce some goods are worked by slaves, wielding outdated equipment. Instead of, chem of chemical fertilizer and tractors, the farms of our nation are fertilized with manure and plowed by horse-drawn plows. Our agriculture is not even stuck in the 19th century, it is stuck in the 15th century. Yeah, this is not good. This cannot be allowed to continue. While the Slavs may have been content to wallow in the Middle Ages, the Aryan people demand and deserve a modern nation. Land must be cleared for new farms, orchids and pastures, and those that Untermensch abandoned must be reclaimed. These farms will be distributed to Aryans, who will own the land and be responsible for overseeing the locals that will conscript that we will conscript the work on it. We will create a new plantation system that will produce all the crops and livestock our people could ever want. The bounties offered by the Russian soil are vast. All we need to do is assert our mastery over it. Okay, that develops our agricultural social uh, development. The perfect few. Nice, defense and attack of core territory. And Aryan control is going to be extreme. Cool. Our race is a precarious situation. It's not a precarious situation. There is no denying that we are foreigners in our own homeland. The Slavs, Tatars, Bashkirs, and all the other Slav races that infest our nation vastly outnumber us. They are, have millions to our thousands, and despite our desperate efforts to find the Aryans hidden among their number, the gap will only grow. Members of the Brotherhood's leadership have debated how to handle this issue. Some members led by Siegfried Schultz. Go away. We don't care. Argue we must expand to Aryanism definition and include more of the people living within our borders to avoid dooming um, our race to being forever a minority. The Fuhrer and his supporters argued that this would be a betrayal of the Aryan race and would only con corrupt the bloodline and see our people dis absorbed by the Slavic hordes within a generation. While these arguments have only grown fiercer as weeks have uh, worn on and the subhuman revolt seems more and more likely, both sides agree on, of course, one of course of action. And one course of action. Regardless of who we consider Aryan, all power must be kept within Aryan hands. Currently, there are Untermensch landowners, Untermensch militia leaders. Even Untermensch politicians attempt to act as a bridge between races. We'll put a stop to this. Every position of power at even the smallest level will be occupied by an Aryan. Those subhumans will st who still have some measure of influence will be liquidated and the threat they pose ended. Oh yeah, I forgot we're researching tanks. Let's go ahead and get the uh, improved infantry equipment. So, we do... Oh my days. We have the Far Eastern Soviet Socialist Republic. Wow, so we got democracies in Amadol, we got, uh, well, basically fascism, well, national socialism on the left, the far right, and then the far left. This is fantastic. Could not have predicted that. If only they were, like, despotism or something. 
or the other way around. But anyways, um, that's all fine. I could spend some more money. Sort out the poverty. So we've almost spent a billion now. That's fine. We're doing good work here. So expand the definition of Arian. Or bring down the jackboot. Right, since we're going down two different routes, I will be going through all these focuses again to do Clash of the Gods. I feel like what we'll do is, since we're going to be sticking with our current leader of Wagner, I believe going down this way sounds more like him, pure Arianism. Whereas the Arian Slav sounds like um, Schultz's route, and A Way to Freedom sounds like his as well, and Arian does not fear the Udermensch sounds like uh, Gunther's. I mean Wagner's. It's good room. So what we'll do is, I'll go down this and this now, and then we'll check all the other ones in the other, uh, other route. But anyways, it's a, in a time of cri uh, crisis, uh, there is no room to question the Bluehood's teachings. The fearable science all talk of expanding the criteria of Arianism. It is only through the purity of our blood that we have triumphed over Slavic warlordism. Uh, to sacrifice that purity now, in the face of widespread insubordination among the superhumans, would amount to racial suicide, so they will follow the example of the Germans, who have never steered as wrong. When dealing with resistance to their rule, the Germans crack down and use brutal suppression to enforce their will. This is how an Aryan nation should be run, not by bowing to the desires of the lesser peoples, but by imposing the iron laws of the, uh, the Ubermensch upon them and wiping out anyone who seeks to subvert or escape those laws. Across West Russia, our brothers have fought resistance movements and carried out terror raids of uncooperative communities, but they have done so in an unorganized and haphazard fashion. If a new Aryan order is going to come to Russia, these actions must be organized and coordinated by the high command. Come with a hammer, the Brotherhood will crush the Slavic upstarts with for the first, the last time. Uh, so add more of our pure Aryans and reduce the administrative strain on our state. Good. Ah, I forgot we were getting hindered by that. Yeah, it's not too bad to be fair, but uh, it'll be better once it's gone. Right, uh, let's have a wee look at put fear in their hearts. Oh my gosh, there's so much reason in these. The High Command has selected several battalions of our soldiers that have proven to be even more effective than the brothers of suppressing the Untermensch who seek to destroy our race. We've reformed these battalions into a secret internal security force, which some of our generals have taken to calling the Nacht Triters. Night Riders in Deutsch. It is an appropriate name as these men will do most of their work in the shadows and the cover of darkness. The Night Riders will travel across Russia, always striking when they're least expected. They will descend upon banner camps and quiet towns alike. Where we suspect partisans live, they will burn everything to the ground, killing anyone they find and not leaving a single stone atop another. Because it is better to have a pacified wasteland than an unreliable sector. In areas that are com uh, compliant, they will be more suitable, dragging off anyone who more subtle rather, dragging off anyone who comes under the Brotherhood's suspicion during the darkest hours of the night and leaving no trace of their visit. The subhumans will be so busy worrying over if they are next to the list, they will never have time to even think resisting our rule. So the mere thought of us will inspire terror in the masses. This increases our political power again, but decreases stability. Of course it would. No god but the Ubermensch. The old gods are dead. The god of the Christians abandoned them to their fate, knowing they could never hope to defy the power of the Aryans. The gods of the socialists, Marx and Lenin and Bukharin, are dead men who have rotted the ground for decades. Their cults have been annihilated and their followers flee from our sight. The new gods of Russia, the Ubermensch, our soldiers fight with divine fury knowing that no other race on earth can stand against them and survive. The Untermensch that invest Russia are beginning to realise this as well. They can no longer keep up their delusions of humanity in the face of our obvious superiority. Brotherhood propaganda efforts will impose, expose this new reality. One campaign will remind members of the Brotherhood, especially those in the armed forces, that they are the pinnacle of creation and the answer to no one but their fellow Aryans. Another separate campaign will be coordinated with our terrorist suppression efforts. The Untermensch will be bombarded with messaging that forces the truth that there is no saviour that will free them from our rule. No hope of their liberation, even in death. The slaves should treat us, true Aryans, as gods. That is our, that is our, that is our just due after ascending. This increases our division recovery rate. Fantastic. And what's the uh, administrative? Okay, so that's probably going to get modified, and that's actually not too bad now. Good. Um, let's continue on, shall we? And the hearts of their families. Despite the efforts of the Night Riders, our nation continues to be plagued by Untermensch terrorism and banditry. Many officers in the Internal Security Division have argued for their own ideas on how to put an end to the insubordination once and for all. One of the most promising proposals we have received has been uh, termed population distribution, but plainly put, in, uh, put, it would be taken hostage on the national level. 
Perth will take one member of every Untermensch family to labour camps, where they'll be held indefinitely until the nation has submitted to a rule. If any sabotage, terrorism, or bandry occurs, the entire population in the nearest camp will be executed in new hostages taken to refill it. This will be a costly programme to enact, requiring resources and manpower that are already scarce. If it can cause a decline in resistance, either through intimidation or by turning local populations against the partisans, it will be worth it. The Aryan race is a massa race, and a massa race cannot tolerate disobedience. Like a virus, we will infect all with dread of our brethren. This increases our war support. And it's going to tear apart families as well. The Aryan race is the rightful master of the earth, and this fact will be reflected in our nation, no matter how hard the Slavs resist. Beyond our borders, there are other upstart warlords that still hold on to the power in the lands of old Russia, ruled by subhumans who decry our brotherhood as treacherous and insane. Conflict with these disgusting and treacherous... Oh, sorry, disgusting excuses for nations is inevitable, and we shall be ready when it comes. Our master race is one built for warfare and conquest, so must the Brotherhood's realm be built for these. Everyone at every level of our society, from the fewer to the lowest slave, will be mobilised to serve a role in this coming war. Russia has been divided for decades, and before that it endured centuries of Slavic domination. We will not tolerate this any longer. Russia is drawing itself back together, and as it does, so its fate hangs in the balance. As the decisive moment draws near, the Brotherhood shall prepare to strike the killing blow, and put down the Slavs once and for all. The East will be unified and will be under a nation controlled by and governed by, oh, governed for only pure Indians. They will obey us without question, without thought. This is our natu uh, only natural. This increases our war support, but decreases our stability. Yeah, stability is something we're not really going to have a lot of. Anyways, a T-55, the basic main battle tank. Right of ascension, 22,000 manpower. Hmm. That would be nice. Eh... Uh, Structure speed, a military factory. Hmm. Yes, let's do that one. Right. Let's get, let's read the next one. No master but Arian. I've I've just read that one. I'm an idiot. The natural state of things. Slowly, surely, calm is at last coming to Western Russia. Liberals unify Kazakhstan. Okay. Uh, the terrorism and banditry have declined since the implementation of population distribution and Knight Rider's efforts are finally beginning to pay off. The militarization of the realm is preparation for the conquest of the eastern lands is progressing steadily. And more Aryans join the Brotherhood uh, ranks and ascending to the top of our society where they belong. The Untermensch seem to be finally learning their place in the world of the Ubermensch and offer a bottomless pool of expand expendable, uh, expandable laborers that the Brotherhood can use to complete its many projects. Let me just uh, go ahead and start that. For many Aryans, it seems we are finally coming out of the darkness and approaching the status quo Russia always should have had. There is still work to be done, of course. Bandits are still active along the fringes of our nation, and there are still rumblings of subhuman revolts that must be monitored. But there is no denying that the Aryan paradise we have fought so long for is finally within sight. With the Aryan race reigning as the masters of Russia, the Slavs and their brethren fully subjugated at last, the natural order has been restored. Russia will soon be pure. Gain a base war support 10 and reduce these administrative strain on our state. I think that'll get rid of it. And then we just have to work down the other side, which um, hopefully we can get done this episode. I really want to unlock this as an exert of influence in the southern oodles, mainly before um, these guys can do it themselves, which they're still a decent bit off of doing. They're, they're hopefully going to get sidetracked with a lot of other, other stuff. Um, because I think what we'll try and do first is we'll actually try and go through um, you and then into um, oh, they're at war right now and into the NKVD uh, Magnitogorsk if that's how you pronounce that it definitely wasn't um, we'll get through them as well so we can kind of cop block them but anyways the natural state of things let's do that for the survival of the blood the brotherhood has been given two missions by Fuhrer Wagner defend the Aryan race's purity and guarantee the survival of the Aryan bloodline as our people forge a new state that will be the eastern home of the Aryan people, we cannot forget why we must not fail to meet these goals. The Aryan bloodline is the pinnacle of evolution, the biological ex expression of perfection. As we consolidate control, we must undertake every effort to entrench this bloodline into Russia, so it will never be removed from its rightful home. We cannot be satisfied with ruling Russia. The Aryans must become the true children of the motherland. Let's just take a wee break from that and... Do we have a cast? Ah, we do not have cash yet. That is fine. Let me get some motorized production then. There's only one 
truck on that uh, one factory on them anyways. For many Aryans, it seems we are finally coming out of the darkness and approaching the status quo Russia always should have had. Stop interrupting me. How dare you. Right, let's get the jet engines now. Change the fighters. You actually do have a little bit of planes, don't you? No, you don't. Oh. Okay. Good. Um, we will spread Aryan culture, traditions, and language, all to encourage our people to accept their new heritage. To increase the progress of our race's entrenchment. Oh. Brotherhood needs blood. Okay. Done. I keep getting inter interrupted. Uh, to increase the progress of our race's entrenchment, we will erase non Aryan culture elements from the East and histories of the Slav and other superhuman peoples will end, and the Nervira Russian tongue will eventually be phased out entirely. Well, some may. Some may consider these steps extreme, they are necessary. We cannot allow the Undermenschens to corrupt our bloodline again. Not when we have finally achieved purity. Teach German. Okay, we share the untainted blood of our Aryan siblings in Germany. Despite being equal members of the master race, our technology is much behind theirs. Part of this is explained by scientific communities of Russia being run by Slavs for centuries, giving us a much worse scientific base to work from. But even in recent years, as the Aryan people have reclaimed Russia, our advances have been a few and far between compared to the uh, marvellous stories we hear from across our western border. There can only be one sensible explanation for this, our language. Though we are not of one race, German and Russian Aryans are divided by language. It's clear the Russian tongue with its... Oh, England and Wales at war. Russian tongue with its Slavic influences and uh, archaic alphabet is holding us back. Luckily a solution is already apparent. Years ago, some members of the Brotherhood's officer corps took in upon themselves to learn the German, the language of Germany as a sign of their admiration, and England's bit well as well. This trend quickly caught on, and there are many fluent speakers already within our ranks. We should formalize the teaching of this tongue, making it official language of the Aryan Brotherhood. The Brotherhood will require every member to learn it, and all schools and universities within our border will only be allowed to teach in German. The transition may be bumpy, but if we are going to catch up with our brothers in Germany, it's a sacrifice we must make. And that improves our academic base. If anything, that would, like, harm it to begin with. Oh, one language, two races. As in, uh, instruction in the new language of our nation becomes widespread, some of these rules uh, responsible for designing the language education program have come to us with a problem. While the Aryan people have taken well to the language, we could soon find ourselves in a nation where the master race speaks one language, while the Slav races speak another. Some Brotherhood members believe this would be a good thing, helping cement the divide between our people's intermage, but it could create enormous administrative difficulties for us in the future. If the slaves only speak Russian or Tatar, or any number of minor languages, those who oversee them would be required to speak those languages as well to make their orders understood. This would condemn many Aryans to having to keep their knowledge of inferior Slavic tongues and negate the purpose of adopting a superior language. As low as we are to uh, dedicate any resources to them, the Brotherhood must begin efforts to educate the slaves on at least a rudimentary basics, rudimentary basics of German so that all Aryans only have to speak the language of our choice. Well, we're taking this... Um, Learn a German thing pretty bloody seriously. Then again, I, I really should be shocked by that. Phase out Russian. The time has come for the hardest part of our language transition. While many have been eager to learn a new language that is more efficient and proper for our new nation, few people, even among the Aryan community, seem as excited to give up their so-called mother tongue. And unfortunately for them, the Brotherhood has made up its mind. There is no place for the Russian language in our nation, and we must abandon it immediately if our bloodline is to achieve its full potential. Our linguistic uh, linguists We'll translate everything to German as soon as possible. Government documents, street signs, menus and restaurants, all of this and anything else that is written down will be changed. There will be some confusion and even chaos in the weeks that follow this which, but that is the price we must pay for efficiency. Once the first phase is complete, the next step of the plan shall begin. Everyone, Aryan and Untermensch alike, shall be required to speak only German. Anyone caught speaking any other language will be publicly flogged. Those who we catch doing this a second time will be executed for the betrayal of the Brotherhood. These punishments are harsh, but they must to force the people to do what is best for themselves. We lose stability for doing that one. So okay, we gain it back there. And we get it there. Labour for eternity. Building slots, resource extraction, fuel gain, construction speed. That gives a production efficiency gain, line change efficiency, start production efficiency, and maximum production. Labour for freedom. Yeah, that sounds the complete opposite of Wagner-like. Alright, goodbye PPSH, hello AK-47. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. We have planes. Let's get them out of exercising. How's, um, how's our societal stuff doing? It's all on the up. Well, majority of it is. The poverty rate is not. We should probably deal with that. Let's phase up Russian. Right, this issue is slavery. An issue has loomed over the Brotherhood since its formation. One that has always gr only grown as we have expanded. By enslaving all non-Aryans within our borders... Okay. Congo just blew up. Uh, we are creating the specific, uh, perfect recipe uh, for an uprising that could spell doom for the Aryans of the East. We have enslaved over 90% of our population, but administering, uh, administrating, administering, sorry, how many slaves has proven impossible. Questions of ownership of complicated matters further. Leave us in a situation where we must contend, must contend with the instability of our enslaved populace while failing to exert any control over the majority of them. Something must change, but our leaders cannot agree on that. Schultz reform is advocate for emancipating the slaves as heretic Heretical, as the idea seems, this case is good. The Untermensch would still be fully subversant to the air, uh, to the Aryan, but as free individuals, the issue of the slave ownership would be eliminated. However, others in the high command, especially those close to Fear Wagner, have labelled the idea of Slavic treachery an invitation for race mixing. They argue that we cannot we can solve the issue with the same method the brother has solved in its other problems. Brute force. The slave system must be organised and the overseers must crush any signs of resistance without mercy. Both cases seem convincing, but we're running out of time and must decide soon. Of course, and we're going to be choosing the Aryan does not fear the Untermensch. The Aryan race is not a race of cowards. We will not bow down to the fears of the weak and wretched. We will not be misled by those who want to corrupt our people and destroy everything we have accomplished. We seek to reform our nation's laws and betray our traditions, but they will not succeed. The Brotherhood follows the natural laws, the laws of blood and iron. Aryans are the master race, and it is our destiny to rule over the world. The slaves, as we say slaves, the slaves are our birthright, ours to do with as we please and discard as we will. They are degenerate subhumans fit only to serve, and if they dare to stand against us, we will crush them like the pests they are. Pure Wagner will put an end to all talk of accommodating the slaves. We will deal with their insubordination as we have dealt with it before by trampling them into submission again and again until they learn their place. It's only through enforcing the natural hierarchy of the races that the Brotherhood has triumphed of the Untermensch. We will not change course or bow to them after our victory has already been secured. As long as we rule, the Aryans will be the masters, and they shall not want uh, shall not want for slaves. Okay, right next. Which is littered with reminders of the uh, perverted societies of once ruled. Churches, mosques, that shoes, the libraries, and more all serve as physical memories of the night, uh, nightmarish times that pre uh, preceded our rule. These uh, contemptible structures serve us as monuments to those that wish to overthrow us and drag Russia back to an era of debauchery and weakness. Queens of slaves and the partisans that hide among them still rally around these buildings, hosting a primitive festivals and celebrate the backwards cultures when they think we aren't looking. We have to stop to this for good. Another wave of cleansing fire will sweep across Russia, destroying anything that could remind slaves of their former lives. We'll use the land freed up by this sterilization to build new community centers for the Aryan race, which will promote our superior culture. Without their reminders to hold on to, the slave races will soon forget their degenerate past. Their only memories will be of the servitude to the Brotherhood. Even the past will offer no escape for them. Wow, we're keep being really harsh to them, but I'm not shocked by that. The struggle between the Untermensch and the Ubermensch and Untermensch does not need to end in total destruction of one or the other. Uh, we can secure a final victory for our race by breaking the subhuman's will to resist. Right now, our punishments for disobedience are severe, but that only means that those who disobey are the strongest slaves we have. The slaves that are brave enough or foolish enough to defy us are instigators of figureheads for their less courageous brethren. So, to secure the obedience of the subhumans, we'll implement a new system of punishments designed to crush any will to resist. Even the smallest act of disobedience from a slave will be met with a public execution that their comrades will be forced to watch. Any slave caught conspiring against their master will be thrown to the dogs while their family watches them die. These mess will be cruel, even for us, but it is necessary. The, co the consequences for rebelling must be so high that even the bravest, most for uh, full heartedly subhuman cannot dare risk it. When they fear the suffering we can bring down upon them so much that their only concern is pleasing us, we will have victory. Right, what do I know? Oh, we should probably research some more doctrine. Uh, we can't do the right of ascension just yet. Initiate propaganda. That's weak of the manpower. Where's the poverty one? Just 
So let's improve our army professionalization. Right, once a slave, forever a slave. If you want to kill a weed, you need to tear it out at the roots. The root of the slave unrest spreading across the nation is hope. Don't to mention hope for freedom or libera uh, liberation. We have revenge against our masters. If we can dispel these idiotic notions and put an end to their dreaming, they may finally stop resisting and submit. The Brotherhood will codify its slave system so that there is no escape for those within it. They will work until they drop, and when they get back up, they will work again. Their children will be born into chains and live their lives, their entire lives in them. Even if their Aryan masters are afflicted by empathy, they will not be able to free them. Time to free a subhuman from slavery will be punishment. Punished by death as all acts of betrayal against the master race will be. The Intermensch will learn existence is only permitted as long as they hold some worth in our eyes, and their only worth is our labour pool. Any attempts at life beyond the purpose will only result in their annihilation. Yeah, really brutal against them. Damn. The mind of the subhuman is simple, malleable thing. That we can mould to meet our needs. The new punishments that have broken their will to resist are only the first step in the Brotherhood's mission to create a new form of Untermensch. One that is incapable of even thinking or a of anything other than how to serve the Aryan race. Next step of his plan is to break their spirits, so that they cannot even dream of freedom. We will do this by denying them hope, as hope is a dangerous distraction in the mind of a slave. There will be no holidays or celebrations to look forward to. The only rest that will be permitted will be at the end of the day when the slaves are already worked themselves past the point of exhaustion. Without little things to hope for, like a decent meal. Uh, oh, Pu Yai's died in Manchuria. Um. Do, 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 do. Without little things to, uh, to hope for, like a decent meal or unexpected break, the Untermensch will eventually forget how to hope for bigger things, like escape or revolution. The next generation of slaves will grow up never knowing that feeling at all, and the generation after that will be physically incapable of wanting to prove their condition. They will finally have become the perfect slaves, worthy of their perfect masters. Divide and conquer. The only thing that unites the slave race is, is their weakness. Beyond that, they are... Uh, uh, it's electric? Oh, I don't know what that is. I'm an idiot. Collection of various subhuman breeds, many of whom have long histories of violence against each other. We would be missing out on an enormous opportunity if we did not capitalize on this. By provoking the racial hatred of the Untermensch, we will divide them from those that could be their allies against our rule. This would also allow the Brotherhood to disguise some of our peacekeeping actions as enemy tactic attacks on the slaves. Regional uh, pacifications and extermination ca uh, campaigns could be presented as Tatar raids and Slavic retaliations. Let's get the basic jet fire now. Just want to upgrade our tech. The subhumans will be so busy focusing their hatred on another that their resentment towards their Aryan race will become an afterthought in their minds. Okay, we can do the, uh, the right of ascension again. Boom. Pretty nice way to get man for. I don't know what that was that just popped up. Uh, while they fight amongst themselves, we'll continue to consolidate our control over every aspect of their lives. By the time any of them might realize they have been tricked, it will be far too late. The Aryans hold in the Russia. Aryans hold on Russia will be secure, and the slaves will be nothing more than the obedient th uh, throngs awaiting their next job. So we upgrade you. Now we have the RPG 2. Nice. Break their spirit. Indeed we shall. Okay, that's looking good. That's looking good. Um, engineer companies. I do need to get anti air in production, actually. Do we have that researched, or is that something I'm also going to have to... No, nope, we're going to need to get that researched. Anyways, divide and conquer. Let's do it. And then that leaves us with the Clash of the Gods. The time has come, with the Brotherhood's grip on Russia becoming more firm every day, an issue that many hope will remain hidden has finally risen to the surface. For years, two men have dominated the Aryan Brotherhood, and their hatred for each other has only grown in that time. Guthrum Wagner, the father of Brotherhood, has seen his dream of an Aryan Russia realised, and has fought to maintain the principles of Aryanism, as he originally envisioned them. Everyone in the Brotherhood admires the Fuhrer's genius, but some have become worried about his refusal to even consider compromise in the face of existential, uh, existential threats to the race. Uh, these members have rallied around Sigurd, uh, Zig, Siegfried Schultz, uh, the dark horse of the Brotherhood Command, and the self-proclaimed saviour of the race. Schultz and his disciples advocate a, uh, a radical theory that the Slavs, the true Aryan race, and the Germans that the Fuhrer admires so much as Zionist puppets. Both men refuse to back down from the views, and ideological war between them has reached the fever pitch. And Victor will soon be determined that the future of the Aryan race hangs in the balance. Russia is only big enough for one tyrant. Indeed it is. And we know who the tyrant is going to be. Both of them, because the series will split into two after today. Well, it's already splitting into two, I have to say. After doing today's episode, it's definitely splitting into two. Um, 
industrial expertise, research facilities, academic base, industrial equipment, poverty, poverty rate. Let's improve the poverty rate. Anyways, a clash of the gods. Here we go. We have a fraternity. That's actually pretty nice. Not oh, that's pretty good as well, actually. Mine's five facilities. A bit, uh, bit uh, sad, but oh well. Area and control extreme. Look how nice that is, though. Hoofed. Um. Yeah, I guess we'll end today's episode after this focus is finished. We have so much political power as well now. Good. And only two remain. Have you the cream of the co Oh, okay. What? Earlier this month, noted author and founder of the Gonzo Journalism, Hunter S. Thompson, released his newest book, Fear and Loathing in Los Angeles. Yeah, sorry, I don't care about the book. I keep forgetting that they are actually uh, authoritarian socialism now. I should have read the event when it happened. But I didn't, because I was a fool. It's interesting to see the Republic of Kazakhstan. I don't know if I've ever had you pop up. Ah, the triumph of the master race. The doors of the courtroom slammed open. Two brotherhood guards marched in, dragging Schultz by the arms. They remained unfazed by the insults and curses he hurled, hurled at them. And forced them into the chair, facing the long table where Wagner and the other members of the brotherhood's leadership sat. There was a moment of silence as Schultz tried to recover his breath. He locked eyes with Wagner and tried to lunge at him with his shackled hands, only for the guards to wrestle him back in the chair. Are you fucking insane, he shouted. You won't get away with this. The people won't let you. They'll shoot you down in the streets like the Zionist rats you are. You're all fucked without me. Do you understand that? Schultz flailed wildly in his chair, looking around the room. Most members of the tribunal looked away as soon as he turned towards them, desperately avoiding making eye, eye contact. Pure smirked and leaned forward, reading off a piece of paper he held. Siegfried Schultz, you are accused of betrayal of the Aryan race, of seeking to corrupt the blood of our people and empower the Untermensch. You are also accused of trying to promote the cause of the ancient enemy, the Slav, and of spreading pro-Slavic propaganda. Lastly, you are accused of slander against the German people, an attempt to divide the Aryan peoples. How does this tribunal vote? There was an awkward murmurs of guilty from other men seated at the table. Wagner smiled. Guilty! The vote is unanimous. Siegfried Schultz, this tribunal has found you guilty of the crimes I have read to you. As punishment for betrayal of the Brotherhood and the race, I sentence you to death. He turned to one of the guards holding Schultz to the chair. Do it. The guard drew his pistol in his holster and before Schultz had a chance to protest, he shot him in the back of the head. The other members of the Brotherhood re he recoiled as Schultz's body slumped to the floor, but Wagner walked towards it and gave it a playful kick. Good try, buddy, but he couldn't fuck with a fewer. Oh! Sounds so bloody badass, and that's opened up some other stuff into the world. Oh my days. Can we can we actually befriend the Germans? Can we befriend them? And that should have opened up. I thought it opens up. Unlocks the Zinger exert influence on the certain rules. Irene economy. 40 miles ex oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I thought I was unlocking other decisions. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so let me exert my influence. The race for the Urals, we already know about this. But we're just going to launch. <laughs> we're just going to launch a military intervention. And that will happen next episode. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll be back very soon for some more. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Then now.